Um, thank you so much for joining us, Alan. My pleasure. Was this a fair trial? Oh, no. It wasn't a fair indictment. It wasn't a fair proceeding. It wasn't a fair jury. It wasn't a fair location. There was nothing fair about it. Uh, the previous district attorney decided not to bring this case. The United States attorney decided not to bring this case. The Justice Department decided not to bring this case. The Federal Election Commission decided not to bring this case. This was a pure case of uh, partisan political election interference. And this comes from a liberal Democrat who voted for Joe Biden. I'm not a Trump supporter politically, but I hate the idea of weaponizing the criminal justice system against political opponents. That sounds more like the former Soviet Union and Iran than it sounds like the United States of Great Britain. What does this mean for the American legal system and, the Ameri and American democracy? It's an attack on both the rule of law and American democracy, and it will create a precedent because I assure you that Republicans will do the same thing. They will have local district attorneys now begin to indict Joe Biden, his son, his wife, his family, uh, people running for other office. This is going to become a precedent which will weaponize uh, the criminal justice system in a partisan way. You're lucky in Great Britain. You don't have elected prosecutors. You don't have elected judges. We made the dumb mistake after, after revolting from Great Britain and borrowing its legal system of abandoning your legal system and adopting Jacksonian democracy in which we elect everybody. We elect dog catchers. We elect uh, public defenders. Uh, everybody has to get elected. And when you're elected, everything becomes political. We are destroying our legal system by its political and partisan nature. You mentioned various dictatorships around the world. How do you think this conviction changes America's image on the world stage? Well, we're not putting people in the gulag. We're not killing people. We're not pushing gays off the roof like Iran. So we're not a banana republic, but it moves us a step closer to a kind of authoritarian uh, approach. Um, we also generally have our system of checks and balances that protects us. But a jury is an important part of the system of checks and balances. It usually protects against a runaway prosecutor or a runaway judge. But in this case, the jury was so biased because it came from the same area, Manhattan, which 85 percent of the people on the jury don't want Donald Trump to be a president and, and use this case as a way of trying to bring about the political goal that they want to achieve. So... This is going to have a devastating effect on American democracy and the rule of law unless it's reversed on appeal. And I'm concerned about it not being reversed on appeal because the judges are elected, too. The appellate judges are elected. And they don't want to go home to their friends and relatives and somebody point a finger at them and say, that's the judge that allowed Donald Trump to become president. That's the judge. When I defended President Trump on the floor of the Senate, I had been very popular on Martha's Vineyard in New York, on Harvard Law School. And people turned against me and my family uh, because they perceived me as an enabler of Donald Trump, even though I voted for, for uh, Joe Biden. Uh, the, the Trump derangement syndrome is real. People really care deeply. They think that Donald Trump is akin to Adolf Hitler and that anybody who helps him is Himmler and Goebbels and Goering and facilitators. Uh, we have become blinded by the Trump phenomenon. And part of it is Trump's fault. Uh, but the response, the reaction, is to hurt democracy. When it comes to historical precedent, is there anything that you would compare this conviction to in American history or perhaps in other nations' histories? Very much so. A McCarthyism in the United States, where we went after people based on their political affiliations. A racism in the South, where all white jurors would convict um, um, uh, uh, African-Americans of doing no crime at all. No, we've had sordid histories uh, throughout the years, uh, and this compares uh, very unfavorably to some episodes in our history. Europe has not been plagued with this except during periods of dictatorship, obviously, but democratic Europe doesn't have elected judges and elected prosecutors. They have professionals. And uh, that serves the interests of justice much better. Will Trump go to prison? No, he will not go to prison, but he may get a suspended sentence. That is, the judge may say, I am sentencing you to two years in prison. There'll be a pause, an immediate uh, 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 headline, and then he'll say, but I'm suspending the sentence because 
you have no prior convictions. But I think the judge will try to send a symbol and give a symbolic sentence of imprisonment that will be suspended. And how do you think that would impact the campaign? I'm not a political uh, analyst. I think there is some possibility that it could help Trump. Um, there will be people like me, Democrats or liberals or centrists, who are so upset at what is going on with the legal system that they may cast a protest vote. Uh, Bobby Kennedy today made a strong statement against this prosecution. And so that gives people like me an alternative. Uh, we could vote for Bobby Kennedy instead of voting either for the Democrat or for Donald Trump. And I think this may boost uh, Kennedy's chances. Don't know who that will help. Do you think that Biden's response to this conviction has been a sensible one as president? I don't know if you've seen the clip that just happened within the last hour where he was asked a question by a reporter. Um, Trump claims that you're, uh, you know, politically prosecuting him. What, what's your response to that? And he turns around and he smiles at her and then he walks off without saying anything. Can I just get your reaction to President Biden's response to this whole episode? I think he's smart not to say anything. Uh, he shouldn't have smiled. This is a sad day for all Americans and for the Constitution. But he shouldn't be perceived as having had uh, uh, an impact on this uh, uh, verdict. But he has had an impact because there's no doubt that Alvin Bragg, the DA, thought he was doing Biden a favor um, uh, by prosecuting Biden's uh, strong opponent. He thought he was serving the interests of the Democratic uh, Party by his partisan prosecution. But um, if, if uh, Biden is smart, he'll stay out of it. From a legal perspective, how easy is it for the Republicans to get their revenge, so-called? I know you mentioned earlier that they could use their own sort of district attorneys to go after Biden and other leading Democrats. It's very easy. You just have a local DA in Texas or a local DA in uh, Alabama. Um, uh, uh, come up with a concocted case like this. Remember that when Stalin and Lavrenti Beria talked, Beria said, show me the man and I'll find you the crime. In some respects, this is worse because what happened is that Bragg tried to find the crime. He couldn't find it. So what he had to make one up. He took it a step further than Stalin. Now, he didn't put anybody in the gulag and he didn't kill anybody and all of that is all fine, but it's a step in the wrong direction. And what about these other legal cases that Trump faces? Do you think that they're even more concerning than, than this one in New York? Yes. Um, I think the one in Florida is uh, the most concerning legally because they have him dead to rights. He's waving a piece of classified material at somebody who's unauthorized to see it and said, I could have declassified this, but I didn't. So I think this is a smoking cigarette butt. That is, it's smoking, but it's not all that serious. Uh, presidents and past officials very often take classified material home with them. The other two cases involving January 6th are much, much more serious and could involve prison time, actual prison time. But the one in Georgia seems to be falling apart because of the misconduct of the prosecutor. And the one in Washington awaits a Supreme Court decision on immunity. So this may be the only case in which there's a conviction before the election. I know that Trump's legal team is now thinking of trying to expedite the appeal and bring it very quickly to the New York Court of Appeals, which may reverse the conviction. How do we fix the American legal system with all the issues you mentioned in terms of the elected uh, prosecutors, the political pressure, the juries coming from very, very selective pools in terms of their political orientations and so mm -hmm. on? How do we fix all of these problems? It's unfixable as long as we have elected judges and elected prosecutors. But the only check on this is another elected branch, and that is the legislative branch uh, can impose a check on some of this by having hearings. But I think we're in for a very long, dark period of uh, legal abuse and legal manipulation and weaponization of the criminal justice system for partisan purposes. As somebody who's devoted his life, I'm 85 years old, for the last 60 some odd years, I've tried to help create an objective, neutral system of justice. And obviously, that project has not succeeded. What's your advice to other lawyers or just to ordinary Americans in terms of the reaction to this? I know that many Republicans are reacting with fury on the Democratic side. Um, I think they're very, some of them are even celebrating this conviction I've seen. So oh. what's your advice to, to Americans? 
go back to your principles. Uh, most lawyers today in America are not principled. They just choose sides and they're result oriented. Uh, Harvard Law School basically is having celebrations. Uh, MSNBC is having celebrations. And people on the right who would do the same thing if they had the opportunity to do it to the left are moaning. What we need is a movement toward the center and an increase in principled, neutral, objective considerations of the rule of law. We're a long way from that, and I'm afraid we're not going to achieve it in my lifetime. You mentioned a couple of uh, media companies there. How do you think the media has impacted these trials? It's as if there were two trials. If you turn on MSNBC and CNN, this was the easiest case since Lincoln's assassination. Um, if, if you turn on Fox, this is the most complicated and, and, and least um, uh, effective uh, uh, case. So the media contributes to it. And the worst thing is that we do not allow cases like this to be on television. The American public should be able to see this trial. I was in the courtroom when Judge uh, Marchand threw out everybody. For some reason, he didn't throw me out. And I saw him uh, behave so badly toward an attorney who was a witness. He basically became De Niro for a moment in, in taxi and, and looked down at this uh, lawyer and said, you looking at me? You talking to me? Um, uh, and, and he berated him and threatened to uh, uh, strike all of his testimony. I wish the American public had seen that. I wish the American public had a right to see this whole trial live rather than through the prism of CNN or MSNBC or the New York Times. So was this some kind of show trial in your view? This was a show trial. This was a show trial with a made-up tr crime. And... Um, and it's one of the first times in American history that we've had a pure show trial, certainly since McCarthyism. So you think, are there any other legal precedents you'd, you'd focus on? I know that McCarthy was obviously a, a political uh, figure who was using um, you know, his power in the Senate to go after various uh, elected officials, or uh, sorry, unelected officials, I should say. Um, but are there, are there any sort of legal precedents um, that you'd look back on and say, well, this was a similar kind of show trial? Well, I think there have been efforts over the years, uh, going back to Thomas Jefferson, to use the political system to get revenge on political opponents, the trial of Aaron Burr. Uh, there have been trials like this uh, in the past. Uh, Burr was acquitted by a jury um, and others as well. This is one of the first cases where there's been A, a conviction, and B, uh, unlikely that the conviction will immediately at least be reversed on appeal. So this establishes a very, very dangerous precedent. And it's embarrassing to be a lawyer in America today uh, after this verdict was, was rendered. But I'm going to continue to fight back. But I'm not going to do it by doing two wrongs make a right. Uh, I'm going to fight back by demanding principles on both sides. Thank you so much, Mr. Dershowitz, for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Uh, Thank you. I loved all the historical references, by the way, so uh, keep that up. Okay. Um, good. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. Sure. Appreciate it.